Good morning, skeptics from Stephen Sydney. I've got here a wonderful experiment for you. It's a, really a magician's trick to show you about perceptions and things. And uh, it's it's about the idiomotor effect, well well described, well discussed by the great James Randi. Now, um, I'll just give you a word of caution about being a skeptic. You tend to have some habits which you seem to have inhabited from ancient Greece. Uh, skeptics were an ancient Greek group and uh, I begin to think maybe James Randi is a reincarnated ancient Greek. I'm not certain. Um, and maybe a lot of modern skeptics on the internet have some kind of Greek gene in them because the ancient Greek society fell for the idea that you could elucidate any knowledge and discover any truth simply by discussion and debate. The Greeks, it never occurred to them to experiment. Um, they, they were basically a bunch of arguing intellectuals, you see. And um, the end result was it took, um, I think, 3,000 years before someone actually put um, a cannonball and a grape at the top of the Tower of Pisa and dropped it to discover that things all fall at the same speed. The ancient Greeks would have argued intuitively, it's so obvious we don't have to test this. Um, cannonballs obviously fall faster. Um, however, they were completely wrong. And that's the problem of believing just in an argument, in cantankerous debate. It doesn't elucidate all things. Now, and there's other illusions too, ongoing illusions that we have, such as railway lines converging in the distance. You can walk along them and uh, you know they don't meet, but your eyes repeatedly tell you they do meet in the distance. So there's continuing illusions in your perceptive mechanisms, okay? So we have to be very careful about what we're going to say. Oh, I know that in advance because um, it's so obvious I don't even have to try that, right? So I'm going to test you now to see if you can do and feel and know for your own erudition the well-known idiomotor effect publicized by the great James Randi. And this is how we do this idiomotor effect. I want to stress it's a completely natural physiological thing. There are explanations for it. You can ask me for it. Okay. So we simply do this. We go one, do it with me, three, four. Do this with me. Hands off the keyboard, hands off the mouse. Okay. One, two, three, four. Come on, skeptics. Now, hold your hands out, space, about three or four inches like this. And... What we get is nothing happens to start with, of course, you expect that, right? But just by waiting, something extraordinary happens because you've never done this before. Because it's such a silly thing to do, isn't it? And while we're waiting, something happens in your hands. And you get a tingling arising in both palms and fingers of each hand, okay? And you also get a sort of rippling effect. Some people get tingling only, like a lemonade effect. Some people get rippling only. Some people get both tingling and rippling. A few oddballs get warming and cooling. Um, I've never had that. Okay. Now, just because I'm talking, it's getting stronger while I wait. And I'm hoping you're doing this with me now. Do copy this demo with me. Because what we find is there's a couple of unusual properties to this strange tingling effect that we have, this idiomotor effect. And it goes like this. I move one hand like this, and the movement registers on both hands. The tingling varies in each hand as I move one hand like this. Okay. Then I can do something else, which is an equally amazing discovery. Um, totally unexpected, just like the railway lines, just like the lead shot falling from the tower and the grape. I can pat like this, and I receive a pulse in this palm. Pat, pat, pat. The hands are obviously not touching. Now, the other thing you can do, you can keep patting. You can pat the heel of the hand. That's okay. You can pat the wrist of the hand. You can pat the forearm of the hand. And you can pat the elbow and the upper arm. And each time you make these pat movements, there's a pulse received in your palm here. Okay, so I go pat down my arm like this, pat, 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 and the pulses are all received in this palm. Okay, I can do this with both hands, by the way. So, 
that's very interesting okay I'll do it again in a minute with you and I'll, I want you to be completely ready with your hands off the keyboard okay now gonna tell you this you need to know this to objectively prove this is not just physiological distortion and um, 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 uh, caused by perceptional errors like railway lines meeting in the in the distance um, you can put your hands on the body field the idiomotor field of a sleeping person you just got to wait 25 35 seconds the field will rise in your hands whatever you wish to call this idiomotor field of a sleeping person you can pat their field like that either hand will do or both hands together and the eyelids of the sleeping person will start to flutter half opening half closing fluttering like this okay and you can pull it out like this slowly or do it quickly and you can pat like this their body field while they're asleep so the idiomotor effect is truly amazing and um, anyone can do this I've literally taught this to three-year-old boys five-year-old kids um, anyone can do it any age group it's been tested on many thousands of people so skeptics can definitely do this okay so I stopped doing this and the strange tingling effect recedes it vanishes okay so totally counterintuitive totally unexpected to what you think how could anything happen it's it's going to be due to this must be due to hand fatigue right or blood pressure or something like that sweat maybe right no it isn't because it works on sleeping people fluttering their eyelids it also works on sleeping animals are you with me it'll work on a child in your lap while they're asleep watching TV, you can play around with your hands like this and flutter their eyelids. Um, so, it's a wonderful discovery. It's just looking where you've never looked before. Whoever asked you to clap your hands and hold them apart two inches and wait 45 seconds? Nobody would normally do that. It's ridiculous. But it's objectively proven by the strange effect that you can flutter people's eyelids while they're asleep, okay? So, going through it again now. Hands off keyboard, hands off mouse. Do it with me. Hands up like this, okay? One, two, three, four. And wait. Okay, now. There it is. The tingling is rising in my hands. I hope it's rising in yours. I'll talk for a bit. My hands are rippling and tingling. And yours could be warming and cooling warming or cooling yours could be rippling only yours could be tingling only okay it doesn't matter everyone gets different effects here with this strange idiomotor effect okay but here we go I'm going to go patting again are you with me you can feel the receipt now it's not the wind blowing on my other hand because it works down here as well okay so it's not sweat it's not blood pressure and it's not hand fatigue causing a pulsing sensation to be felt in this palm not hand fatigue, not blood pressure, not sweating. Okay, none of that. I do sweat, by the way, but not that much. Now, um, so you can, you can pat your own shirt doing this and feel the pulses in this hand here. So I hope I've got, I've got to you there. I've shown you that there's an unexpected effect inside a very common human activity, a very common human action. Uh, more common actually than walking along railway lines inside the illusion of uh, mundaneness that nothing could possibly happen inside the situation there is an unexpected treasure something there the idiomotor feel is there waiting for you the idiomotor effect whoever said that those people doing the idiomotor effect with widgee boards and, and dousing rods don't feel things in their hands. Whoever insisted there is no feeling whatsoever in their hands. Did J James Randi ever say there's definitely no sensation in the hands of a dowser or a widgee board person? I don't think he did. Yet you can do this and you will feel this idiomotor effect. So it's okay for you to go off adventuring and discover things by yourself. Now, the other thing we do notice is that I talk while I'm blue in the face. I repeat things ad nauseum in these videos. Skeptics need to watch these videos at least twice 
because they seem to be forever um, cross-referencing everything they watch with their own preconceived intuitions. So watch it twice and see if you can get the idea out of this video and then talk to me, okay? And ask me any question you like about this. Okay, Stephen Sydney, over and out.